going to take that as a good sign. And yeah, I'm seeing more. I'll, okay, wonderful. <laughs> so we've got we've got a pretty big group, and then we have even more who I believe are going to be uh, joining us on a time delay um, through the recording. So I thank you all so much for joining us. This is one of our big ones. Um, we. Seth and I uh, don't tend to follow the strict uh, old Greek calendar, but we tend to mark uh, the return of Persephone on the spring equinox, and we tend to mark the descent of Persephone on the fall equinox. So these is one of our two big ones, and that is Seth's cat, uh, uh, Nyx, in, <laughs> in the background there, making her presence known she, uh, and joining the festivities. She uh, doesn't normally join the festivities, but maybe Ostara is uh, bringing out the little wit in her, so. <laughs> Because, so, uh, yeah, we can't control that, but she does much. She might be <laughs> involved in the ritual, but yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so bear with us and uh, enjoy the pretty kitty. <laughs> um, before we get started, I just wanted to uh, call one thing to everyone's attention. If you uh, have the, uh, the moment to take a look at this, uh, my, uh, the carver of my central Persephone icon here um, that I used to represent unified Persephone. Uh, I have my dark Persephone and light Persephone showing the different sides. Um, but my, my carving, which I really love and appreciate, um, was carved in Kiev uh, by some very talented woodworkers. And I noticed recently that they have had to close up shop for obvious reasons, or at least pause production, and have been requesting uh, donations through their Etsy shop. So if you uh, love pagan art and you want to uh, support very specific individuals trying to make it by in Ukraine right now during a difficult situation, I'm gonna throw their link to that in the chat and also uh, include it in the notes that I send out at the end of each ritual. So if you have a chance, look through, they've got some beautiful art and uh, if you have a few extra dollars, it would be definitely appreciated paying it forward. Their, their art has meant a lot to me and I'm sure many others. So I just wanted to call that out before we start. All right, so as we get started, I just want to uh, begin by cleansing our space, making us ready for worship. Uh, do you have uh, the burnables? Here we go. Seth here is going to light uh, an evergreen branch that we collected over the winter for smoke cleansing. And then we're gonna mix it with some Himalayan salt that we've mixed into water for our crinips to bless the altar. And now since the most important part of this uh, cleansing is, is mental because we're here joining each other in the virtual space, I'd like to take every, uh, everyone to take a moment to settle yourself if you haven't already, make sure you're seated comfortably and that you can take in a big breath begin to release unnecessary baggage, stress, parts of the day that aren't relevant to you right now. Maybe bring a slight constriction to the back of your throat so you feel a little bit of a rhythm when you inhale and exhale. So you can track that cycle with sound as well as the feelings in your body, in your belly and rib cage and chest as they expand. in the face and the sinuses, that cool feeling as new air comes in, and that warm gust as air comes out through the nostrils, gliding above your lips. And as we celebrate this point in the seasonal cycle that we're in, find the cycle of your own breath and appreciate each part. The feeling of expansion as you take in more air, holding at the top, Take a moment to appreciate being full. And then also appreciating the releases of each exhale and the pleasure of letting things go. And even the pleasure of emptiness, taking a moment of stillness before you go to the next breath. Taking a moment to find the unique qualities that make each part of breath special and pleasurable.
Now having cleansed our space and cleansed our inner space, I invite Seth to get us started with an invitation to Persephone to join our ritual tonight with her prayer. Persephone, my anchor and teacher, I ask for your guidance, protection, and support during my physical and spiritual journeys. Now that we've invited the goddess into our circle here, I'd like to direct your attention to the offerings that we've uh, brought to the altar today. We have flowers, uh, fresh flowers for the coming of spring in celebration. We have a corn muffin, which is not just uh, sweet cakes of um, happy springtime, but Demeter and Persephone herself are goddesses specifically of the grain. So that is a homage to that. We have some fresh cantaloupe for the fresh new spring that's come to us. And we have some rosé champagne, which is traditionally the, uh, the celebratory drink of reunion and just general merriment. So blessed Ostara everyone, blessed Ostara Persephone. And now having invited Persephone to join our circle, um, we praise her with a traditional hymn and then a more modern ceremony that we've created together using these candles. And the first is the Orphic Hymn to Persephone. Um, I use the Thomas Taylor for this one just because I enjoy the way the rhymes come together. And this one uh, means a lot to me and has brought me through many seasons, both good and bad. O vernal queen whom grassy plains delight, sweet to the smell and pleasing to the sight, whose holy form in budding fruits we view, earth's vigorous offspring of various hue. Espoused in autumn, life and death alone, to wretched mortals from thy power is known. For thine the task, according to thy will, life to produce and all that lives to kill. Here, blessed goddess, send rich increase of various fruits from earth with lovely peace. Send health with gentle hand and crown my life with blessed abundance, free from noisy strife. Lest in extreme old age the prey of death, dismiss we willing to the realms beneath, to thy fair palace and the blissful plains where happy spirits dwell for Persephone reigns. As we say farewell to the darkness of winter, we honor the spiritual lessons we learned in this quiet season while the earth was asleep. We remember how the shadow side of the year reflects Persephone's time with her husband, Hades or Pluton, and the ways that this marriage of two opposites transformed one another and the world into a more balanced whole. As all that lives must return to the sleep of death, so all that is dead will be restored to life in a new form. We thank Hades and Persephone for these winter blessings from the underworld. The first we thank today is purification. And we're lighting one of our darker candles for lessons learned in winter. Understood from the perspective of a world in eternal cycle, death can be seen as a form of purification. The spirit goes on to trace its next path wherever it may be, and the shell that held it is no longer needed. The natural world then begins the work of clearing away a hole that has no use anymore to restore it to the raw materials it was made from. The next blessing of death that we thank is patience. One of the most difficult gifts to receive and yet invaluable in an uncertain world. Death teaches us patience in the wake of loss as we slowly mark the days after a loved one has departed. And as we learn to accept the eventual close of our own lives with grace. We thank Hades and Persephone for the blessing of healing. Our nightly mimic of death, sleep, offers our bodies and minds their most productive time to repair themselves. In the natural world, the winter time is when the earth is consuming the decay of autumn to become nutrients later and offering perennial plants and hibernating animals their own sacred rest. We thank Hades and Persephone for the gift of introspection. As humans come to the closing of our lives, we tend to feel an almost inevitable pull to the review our memories, our actions, and those people and things that have meant the most to us. In quieter or darker times throughout life, we feel smaller bursts of this impulse that will help us evaluate our present. We thank Hades and Persephone for the gift of revelation. In times of deepest stillness comes revelation, 
newfound understanding of who we are, how our lives have shaped us and what we hold most dear. These moments of clarity are often bestowed upon those near death, but are also felt in smaller ways at the closing of the day or at the end of a phase in our lives, if we hold the space for them. Lastly, we thank Hades and Persephone for the gift of ideas, because once in this newfound understanding of what is and what has passed, we are prepared for the glimmers of what could have been and what still could be in the future and our dreams for a better world, whether for ourselves or for generations down the line. And now we find that when Persephone once again becomes Kore, she carries these qualities with her to the world above. In the light of the sun and in the company of her mother's productive and expansive nature, these qualities take on a new cast and shift into something slightly different. On this sacred day between dark and light, winter and summer, we honor this special power that Persephone holds to transition between identities, phases, and spaces with grace, adapting herself completely to whatever environment she is in while remaining utterly and uniquely herself. We marvel at the transformations we see around us and within ourselves as purification becomes renewal. We thank Persephone and her mother Demeter for the gift of renewal. When the process of decay has finally cleared away or repurposed every unnecessary element, all that is left is rich nutrients for new life. Thus, purification is transformed into renewal. We watch as patience becomes hope. When patience is brought into the light of day and the movement of real life, we will inevitably see the cycles turn endlessly and learn that just as easily as good fortune can turn to bad, bad fortune can turn to good. Thus, patience is transformed into hope. We thank Demeter and Persephone for the gift of hope. We watch as healing becomes vitality. When bodies, minds, and souls are healed of the wounds that trouble them, energy is freed up not only to survive, but to thrive, to do more for ourselves and others. Thus, healing is transformed into vitality. We thank Demeter and Persephone for the gift of vitality. We watch with wonder as revelation becomes curiosity. As any scholar, adventurer, or spiritual seeker knows, a long-awaited answer is rarely an ending, but rather the beginning, a jumping off point for a whole new host of questions. Thus, revelation becomes curiosity. We thank Demeter and Persephone, Persephone for the gift of curiosity. We watch in wonder as introspection becomes opportunity. As we become better at knowing ourselves and our histories, we become better at seeing the patterns around us as they unfold, or even before they unfold, allowing us to note where we could take advantage of the patterns or even rewrite them. Thus, introspection becomes opportunity. We thank Persephone and Demeter for the gift of opportunity. And lastly, we watch as ideas become experiences. Ideas start out subtle and shapeless but when fed and developed, take on a life of their own until they eventually guide our actions. These actions bring us to new places and phases in our lives and thus ideas become experiences. We thank Demeter and Persephone for the gift of our experiences in this life. We welcome Persephone back into the land of the living and the company of Demeter. And we rejoice in the anticipation of seeing these, their summer blessings come to fruition all around us. Hail Hades and the sacred blessings of death. Hail Demeter and the sacred blessings of life. Hail Persephone and the sacred balance between them, life and death and death and life. And at this point, we invite you to take a few moments of quiet reflection on the transformations that you are beginning to see or wish to see in your own lives in the coming spring. Returning to that slow, simple breath feeling the cycle.
At this point, if you've closed your eyes, you might want to begin to gently open them. And slowly move fingertips and toes if you've gone still. Maybe loosen your body. Feel it waking up from an introspective period, even a small one. Noticing what that process feels like. And in a personal practice, you might find that you want to return to some of these thoughts that have come up in your meditation or write some of it down. So a private practice might include journaling here or later. If you have some specific blessings that you want to share and give thanks for, you're welcome to put them in the chat, but you do not have to. And we definitely thank you for sharing your presence. It feels very good to be joined by so many devotees uh, virtually. Um, mostly this has just been us and a couple of friends in our very small uh, group, but we see how many people around the world uh, share like this, this beautiful, a uh, place that we've found spiritually and come into it together. And at this point, we give thanks to Persephone for her presence at this ritual. And uh, we'll actually be leaving the circle of candles out uh, until they burn out here. So uh, Seth is only gonna be putting out our source candle when we do our closing uh, rite, but We'll be, uh, we'll be meditating with these candles for a while after this uh, public part of the ritual is over. If you wanna be in contact with us, um, I will be sending out a sheet that has our contact information as well as a breakdown of this ritual in case you wanna to return to any part of it. And there'll be a recording of this placed for, for anyone who couldn't be with us, but also for any of you who would like to return to it again at another time. And thank you all so much for joining us today. So. Seth, if you would like to close us out. Persephone, my anchor and teacher, I thank you for your guidance, protection, and support that you've given me through my spiritual and physical journeys. Thank you all so much. Have a blessed spring equinox or Ostara, however you call it and have a wonderful transition into your spring and summer season. Happy spring, happy Ostara. Good night.